కృపావార్త కార్యక్రమమునకు స్వాగతం నేటి ధ్యానాంశము రాజ్యము గవర్నమెంట్ ఆయన భుజముల మీద రాజ్యభారముండును యక్ష్య గ్రంథము తొమ్మిదవ అధ్యాయము ఆరవ వచనము ద బర్డెన్ ఆఫ్ గవర్నమెంట్ విల్ బీ ఆన్ హిస్ షోల్డర్స్ ఐజయా చాప్టర్ నైన్ వర్స్ సిక్స్ రాజ్యమోషక్తియో మహేమ నిరంతరము నివియునవి తండ్రి పరలోక మందున్న మా తండ్రి మీ రాజ్యమో వచ్చునుగా పరలోక మందున్న మా తండ్రి మీ రాజ్యము వచ్చును గాక మీ చిత్తము పరలోక మందు నెరవేరునట్లుగా భూమి అందు నీ చిత్తము పరలోక మందు నెరవేరునట్లుగా భూమి అందు మాయడల పరాధములను చేసిన వారిని క్షమించినట్లు పరలోక మందున్న మా తండ్రి మీ రాజ్యమో వచ్చునుగాక ఆయన భుజముల మీద రాజ్యభారముండును యష్య గ్రంథము తొమ్మిదవ అధ్యాయము ఆరవ వచనము ద బర్డెన్ ఆఫ్ ద గవర్నమెంట్ విల్ బీ ఆన్ హిస్ షోల్డర్స్ ఐజయా చాప్టర్ నైన్ వర్స్ సిక్స్ ద సన్ ఆఫ్ మ్యాన్ హ్యాస్ కామ్ టు సర్వ్ అండ్ not to be served manushya kumarudu paricharamo cheyutuku vachanu gaane paricharamo change konadaniki raaledu manushya kumarudu paricharya cheyutuku vachanu gaane paricharya change konutaku raaledu the son of god has come to serve and not to be served all the heads of the governments on the planet earth has much to learn from jesus christ the best example of governance jesus christ came into the history of mankind and made his dwelling with man as immanuel god only for a very short time of nearly 33 years 33 and a half years not more than that yet the imprints of Jesus Christ can be so clearly seen even today even today Jesus Christ is influencing many lives converting them 
giving them deliverance giving them joy giving them healing giving them their hearts desires the lord has led them to the heaven h a v e n heaven they desired h a v e n heaven means the shore in good olden days the transportation is not as well developed as the present days in the present day we have rail routes road routes airways and world is well connected but in olden days especially during the times of jesus christ when jesus christ was dwelling with man as immanuel god the chief mode of transportation from one place to other place for longer distances is through waterways on ship nadi pinchuna nava nadi sandra mona deva nava jeevana marga mona na janma tarimpa nadi pinchuna nava ratram tayu srama padina rale du prabho jayamo rahadaru lovadakinano radayano pratifalamo rakshinchuni siluva ramani alo tulalo ratanalanu vedakutalo rajilluna padava nadi pinchuna nava na jeevita teeramuna na pajaya bharamuna naligina na hridayamuna nadi pinchumulo tunaku na yatma virabhuya na de
transportation in good old days is through waterways on boats on ships people used to travel what a wonderful hymn this hymn nadi pinchu nanava is composed and compiled by dr a b masilamani the beloved servant of the lord who has been a great composer of many hymns reviving the church encouraging the church building the church throughout the unified andhra pradesh in those days in look chapter 5 we see probably look chapter 5 was the motivation for the hymn writer dr ab masilamani to compose this heart touching hymn probably there will be no church throughout the unified andhra pradesh the present day andhra pradesh and telangana states wherein this hymn has never been sung such is the fame of this hymn what a wonderful hymn dr ab masilamani has composed unless a person goes through brokenness such beautiful things will not come out of any one's heart how can revival come dead preachers preaching dead sermons to dry bones can we expect revival no there will not be any revival unless the preacher goes through the fiery furnace of afflictions and be purged and purified and made as the pure gold he cannot shine forth the light of god he cannot win souls he cannot bring forth revival probably this might be the personal experience of dr ab masilamani in walking with jesus christ so he could compose such a lively hymn without having personal fellowship with jesus christ without spending time in meditating on the word of god 
without spending time in prayer no one can do a fruitful ministry no one can ever compose such beautiful hymns fanny crosby composed more than 6000 hymns Dr. A.B. Masilamani is no blind, blind person. He is gifted with sight like as any one of us. But Fanny Crosby, Mrs. Fanny Crosby, she was blind ever since her childhood. Fanny Crosby happened to be blind. what a wonder no person with sight gift of vision has ever been so successful as fanny crosby in compiling hymns glorifying the creator god how is this possible eyes have not seen ears have not heard nor human heart has comprehended the things that god prepared for those that love him fanny cross be loved god in spite of having no vision in spite of bl- darkness in spite of blindness all around her there is darkness yet all her inside is filled with light how is this possible any cross be get by heart all the five books of the law all the first five books of the bible genesis the first book of genesis has 50 chapters it's no small book there are many smallest books in the bible with only a single chapter for instance the book of jude even though the book of jude is the smallest with only one chapter and many other books with only a single chapter yet they contained wealth of information the invisible things the hidden things the secret things the mysterious things the conflict the battle in spiritual realms our conflict our struggle is not with flesh and blood our struggle and our conflict and our fight is with the dark forces evil forces spiritual dark forces in the heavenly realms are you experiencing much hindrance are you experiencing many problems many struggles probably you are conflicting you are struggling you are in a battle with the hidden forces if you were to never know jesus christ if you were to never embark on never start on your pilgrimage to the celestial city the conflicts you face in this world are lesser the moment you come to the knowledge of the saving grace of jesus christ and start your journey to your destination your home your place of rest everlasting life glory then the conflicts you face the friction you face the opposition you face the invisible closed doors that you face will be many obviously you will be exhausted in some instances you may even lose 
you have faith that is more precious than gold don't we see so many youngsters not only youngsters celebrated christians in their old age with so much of experience of and knowledge of the word of god turning away from jesus christ simply because they have lost something so precious to them they have lost something so valuable to them they have lost so dear to their heart i think that is so dear to their heart so in spite of being faithful in spite of following jesus christ with all our heart we have experienced this loss why at all should we continue in faith with that notion with that idea when a loss comes when a broken health comes when a diagnosis of dreadful sickness comes the faith of the faithful is getting shattered is broken is vanished it should not be so having seen the faithfulness of god for so many decades loss of a precious thing valuable thing loss of health loss of worldly wealth treasures riches name fame should any of these things make you turn back in your journey with jesus christ and prevent you from entering into the celestial city no when upon life billows you are tempest tossed thinking that you have lost all that you have count your blessings name them one by one and it will surprise you what the lord has done in those days in those days of tough times in the times of loss in the times of humiliation in the times of sorrow in the times of obstruction you need to be clinging on to jesus christ carefully watching over are you prayerful are you waking up early in the morning giving time for prayer in the times of weakness in the times of loss in the times of calamity you should be more vigilant you should be waking up early and searching jesus christ and carrying all your burdens in the garden of gethsemane in a crucial hour in few more minutes jesus christ will be betrayed and will be given to the hands of sinners for crucifixion great sorrow is awaiting great pain is awaiting calamity is awaiting tragedy is awaiting suffering and sorrow are awaiting in that crucial time what jesus christ is doing pray that you will not fall into temptation jesus christ is alerting his disciples that they should be watchful they should be vigilant they should be awake they should not fall asleep in the time of temptation in the crucial hour jesus knows the things that are store in future so jesus wants pray that you do not fall into temptation james peter john only these three disciples among 12 disciples only jesus christ called these three disciples took them to the regular place where jesus used to spend time in meditation in prayer in the garden of gethsemane jesus is praying when he prayed the sweat that is coming from his forehead falls onto the ground onto the earth and the drops of sweat falling from the forehead of jesus christ appears like the drops of blood falling from the head of jesus christ with such agony with such burden jesus christ is agonizing in prayer ఆయన శరీర ధారిగా ఉండినటువంటి దినములలో చింప సఖ్యం కానీ మొలుగులతోనూ మహారోదనతోనూ ప్రార్థన చేసాను గనక ఆయన అంగీకరింపబడెను బికాస్ వెన్ హీ వాజ్ ఇన్ బ్లడ్ అండ్ ఫ్లెష్ వెన్ హీ వాజ్ ఇన్ ద ఫార్మ్ ఆఫ్ మ్యాన్ జీసస్ ప్రేడ్ విత్ మాచ్ గ్రోనింగ్స్ విత్ మాచ్ grief agony sorrow tears 
that is the very reason why jesus christ is accepted jesus christ was delivered from the grave from the gates of hell no man has ever overcome death only jesus christ has risen victoriously from death satan is so proud satan is very sure that no man that is born of woman can ever overcome death can ever regain the lost glory satan is so proud that he has taken man as hostage he has kept man as a slave to the sins and this sins committed by man with addiction has the power to cause death because sin is the sting of death unless there is if there were to be no sin there is no death how at, how at all this death has come into human courts courts of human history it is through the sin because the sin is the sting of death jesus wanted to break the sting of death that is sin and put an end to the cycle of sin and death that's what christ has done on the cross this is the burden that was there on the shoulders of jesus christ has christ denied denied the burden has christ denied the responsibility that is entrusted to me to him has christ absconded from the purpose with which he was sent on to the planet earth this is the very purpose this is the very reason with which my father has sent me to this planet earth this is the mission for which i have come to lay down my life to save many to save the sinners i have not come to this world for the sake of righteous i have not come to this world for the sake of the people that are well i have only come to this world for sinners not to punish sinners not to accuse sinners it is not my work to accuse anyone it is not my work to cause suffering to anyone my work is only to deliver man from suffering to deliver man from lost glory to deliver man from the bottomless pit because man is created in my image in my form so i am not putting any burden on any man i bear all the burden i took all the burden the burden is on my shoulders i took the cross i carried the cross to calvary i carried your sins i have put all your sins and iniquities on my back i will never ever remember your iniquities come receive the grace all those that do not have money come and buy wine and milk without giving anything buy milk and buy wine and drink and get strength and get nourishment should we deny this offer should we deny this grace when we are poor when we are sinners when we are sick jesus has come to us rescued us helped us delivered us made us heal of our sicknesses should we reject this grace should we forget the good things that we have received from jesus christ and stop testifying the goodness of jesus christ go and preach to the ends of the world what will you preach what you have to preach what you have received from jesus christ if you are to reject jesus christ how at all you will see the miracles how at all you will see the wonderful things how at all you experience the joy of salvation how at all you will experience the freedom in your spirit how at all you will experience the marvelous and mighty deeds of god you deny suffering you do not want suffering you deny poverty you do not want poverty through the school of suffering through the school of hunger through the school of poverty man will learn the power of god after four centuries of slavery the children of jacob the children of abraham were delivered from bondage captivity they could be straight away led from egypt through palestine to the promised land kana that's so easy that's so simple that's so quick yet god has plans 
to prosper the children of Jacob, to strengthen the children of Jacob, to teach them to depend on God for everything. Today we see ecological crisis. What is ecological crisis? Today we see economic imbalances. Mother Teresa, the saint of God, Jesus Christ, the follower, the ardent believer of Jesus Christ says, the problem of this world today is hoarding of resources, hoarding of wealth, accumulating wealth and not sharing. That is the main problem. In other words, as Pope Francis, the servant of the Lord says, the problem that we face today is ecological crisis and economic inequalities, economic imbalances. The problem is hoarding up wealth, accumulating wealth and not having any heart to share what one possesses. This is one of the deceptions of the invisible enemy, the Saturn. Is it not true? What is the use of hoarding so much of wealth, accumulating so much of wealth, knowing fully well? No one can ever take any of the wealth that we accumulate. Not we, the preacher has not accumulated anything for himself. What is the point in accumulating so much of wealth, knowing fully well that you cannot carry even a kilogram of gold with you to your place of dwelling, whether it is with God or away from God. Can you carry anything? You know very well, you have to leave everything here. Can you carry your degrees? Can you carry your publications? Can you carry your inventions? Can you carry your loud ones? Can you carry your loud apartment that you built for yourself? Can you carry the fields, the livestock, all that you have gathered? Dravya mano totalaku samayamida sarva mano prabhu kiche Sagedai Samayamuna Kannula Nethi Pairula Chodu Koya Gale Revaru Koya Gale Revaru Koya Gale Revaru Koya Gale Revaru O Sanghama O Sanghama Tino Chotra Guchusukintuva Pope Francis, the head of the church, the leader of the church, so clearly states the problem today is ecological crisis, economic imbalances and the solution is not competition, cooperation. I am world's first economy. I should retain my status of being first. That is the notion of man today. I am the world's richest person. I should retain this status in the forthcoming year also. Is this the way? Is this the agenda that we have or I have come thus far to the celestial city Zion. Still I am this much away from my home and I have to become, go a bit more closer to my celestial city Zion, to my place of rest, to my eternal dwelling. 
in the forthcoming year i should make sure that i will have appointed times of spending with god having fellowship with jesus christ as the watchman waits for the day break i should wait with my prayer prepared for the lord i should with my prayer prepared wait for the lord as the watchman waits for day break early in the morning i should have specific prayer times in the forthcoming new year i should be formed the image of christ the qualities of christ the nature of christ should be formed in me it is very difficult even impossible for the rich to enter into the kingdom of god with the burden of the kingdom of god with the, with the burden of the gardens jesus christ has come into this world jesus christ was sent by father god into this world and all the heads of the nations have much to learn has much to learn from jesus christ because his kingdom is going to be the everlasting kingdom so the heads of the nation should be devoting their efforts devoting their energies devoting their work preparing a way before the lord prepare the way before the lord who are you what should we tell to those that have sent us who are you are you the messiah are you the christ are you the prophet are you eliza who are you the soldiers comes to prophet isaiah prophet john the baptist john the baptist and asks while john the baptist in the wilderness is baptizing people for the forgiveness of sins the soldiers comes and asks who are you are you the messiah are you the promised prophet eliza in the book of malachi the last book of the old testament god is promising i will send i will send a prophet with the spirit of eliza and he will turn the hearts of children to me to the father god he will prepare a way before the messiah as god has promised john the baptist was sent when asked by the soldiers john baptist clearly says i am not the promised one i am not the messiah the one com- that comes behind me is more worthier than me i am not even worthy worthy to unloose his shoes he is the christ i am not the christ then why are you baptizing then why are you baptizing for the forgiveness of sins of man i am baptizing with only water for the forgiveness of sins for repentance for calling men to repentance and receiving new heart new life but the one that comes after me the messiah jesus christ will baptize men in fire and in spirit when we are baptized in the spirit of fire fire of spirit we'll be filled with love we'll be filled with power we'll have great burden for our neighbors we we'll love our neighbors so deeply so that to the extent that we will have the burden for them as they are perishing as they are not knowing jesus christ and they are close to falling into the bottomless pit this is what is called baptism in spirit i am only baptizing you for the forgiveness of sins in water i am baptizing because through this endeavor messiah will be revealed to israel while i was baptizing the messiah jesus christ will come to me the one that has told me to baptize men 
but their forgiveness of sins has told that while I am doing this will of God I will be revealed the Messiah the Spirit of God will come upon the Messiah in the form of Tao upon whom I see the Spirit of God he is the Messiah he is the anointed one he is the Holy One of God to reveal the Messiah to Israelites I am baptizing in water I am only the voice in the wilderness preparing the way before the Lord as prophet Isaiah has prophesied John the Baptist know from where he has come and where he is going and what is his purpose Matthew chapter 3 while John the Baptist is baptizing to the multitudes many are coming to John the Baptist and are repenting and are confessing their iniquities confessing their wrongdoings confessing their sins and baptizing in water to wash away their iniquities to wash away their sins by accepting by confessing their sins before God and are becoming God fearing people acknowledging the existence of God acknowledging the righteousness of God and being buried for their sins and rising up as a new creation as a newborn children receiving the word of God receiving the message of God prophet what shall we do the soldiers are coming the people are coming and are asking prophet what shall we do if you see the poor provide him what all he needs if you see someone hungry share your bread with him if you see homeless poor person take him to your house and give him accommodation provide him home if you see naked person if you were to have two clothings give one of your clothings one of your garments to the one that has no garment at all that was shivering in cold the prophet is the preacher is so blessed the preacher has never ever hoarded up goods resources wealth for himself just believing in jesus christ you have not brought anything to this world and you will not take away anything from this world should the preachers not imitate jesus christ in the book of imitation of christ thomas kempis writes how we have to follow the footsteps of jesus christ thomas kempis writes the beautiful book imitation of jesus christ we are called to imitate jesus christ has jesus christ ever hoarded up wealth has jesus christ ever accumulated wealth built apartments for himself built industries this is not the government of jesus christ the government of the kingdom of god is righteousness truth love peace joy do we find such good things in any of the worldly governments only competition 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 no cooperation no mutual coexistence no peace no joy no sharing no sacrifice is this the government that is useful for people all the world leaders have many things to learn from the governance of jesus christ there is a conflict there is a argument between the disciples among the disciples of jesus christ among us who is greater who is mightier who is stronger who is powerful is this not the competition that we see today the pope of the church so clearly says pope francis says what do we need today is not competition we need cooperation 
for everything and anything competition we need cooperation we need sharing to overcome the problem of economic imbalances we need sacrifice we need responsibility we need love to overcome the problem of ecological crisis my home should be clean at the cost of other person's home is this a good notion i will dump nuclear waste anywhere and everywhere my country should be clean my land should be clean my water should be clean my neighbor can be suffering to any great extent i does it doesn't matter to me i will pour out all the nuclear waste at the threshold of my neighbor i will turn my neighbor's belongings into a dung hill is this notion correct the notion that we should have is we all belong to one big family and we are all brothers and sisters what a wonderful message of love is it not good to listen if we have such notion that all the men in this world belong to one family and we are all brothers and sisters do we see hoarding of wealth do we see accumulation of wealth at the while many people all around us are in scarcity are in poverty or in hunger or in homelessness or in fear what is what does this mean this only means that we do not not we the preacher is not included most of the men in this world do not have the notion the love of jesus christ going on hoarding wealth accumulating wealth going on doing evil to the neighbor planning malicious things evil things planning violence harm causing fear and threat loss to the neighbor my nation should be world top economy is that competition encouraging should the competition be encouraged there is an argument in the disciples among the disciples of jesus christ among us who is greater jesus or hears the arguments and gathers his children disciples as the hen gathers its little ones under its wings and teaches his disciples through example jesus brings one little child and makes them stand amidst all of his disciples and shows the little child to his disciples he that becomes humble like this little one is greatest among you he that wants to be the highest the topest the greatest you are competing no you want to be the world first economy you want to be world number 1 in air defense you world you want to be world number 1 in exporting weapons then see this example i am showing you this little child which among you becomes like this little child humble in his heart without any intention to do harm to anyone humbles himself will be the greatest among you this is the governance of jesus christ truly only this will last don't we see many great economies rising and falling the kingdom of jesus christ is the everlasting kingdom he that humbles himself and receives the new heart like that of a newborn child will be the greatest in the kingdom of god 
which of you want to become the greatest the highest the topest the top one should humble himself and serve all who is greater the one sits at the table and relishes the dishes or the one that stands and provides the meal yet i say to you if any one were to be highest greatest then he has to humble himself as that of a servant and become servant to all then he will be regarded as greatest in the sight of god in the kingdom of god jesus has not told by mere preachings jesus did what he has preached jesus practiced what he has preached indeed he became servant to all jesus took a bowl of water and a towel and went on washing the feet of all of his disciples and wiping their feet with a cloth to that point the servant of god has to humble himself today we see the so called servants of the lord holding so much wealth holding so many fields holding so many bank balances they do not even know how many schools they are, are there under their authority how many orphanages are there under their authority how many lands are there under their power what grain has to do with chaff has jesus ever accumulated such wealth hoarded such wealth what we need today is cooperation what do we need today is love not competition unhealthy competition i should be the top i should be the highest i should be the best if you want to be indeed the first you should keep yourself the last because the last shall be the first and the first shall be the last obviously what is great in this world sight is an abomination in the sight of god jesus shows the little child he that wants to be great should be humble like this little child innocent like this little child no intention to do harm to his neighbor if you want to be the highest if you want to be the greatest you should become servant to all no servant is greater than the master if the master himself took the form of a servant and humbly served the poorest of the poor the sickest of the sick the greatest of the sinners then what am i then what are you if christ were to take my position my place the greatest of sinners should i not take the place of my brother should i not take the place of my neighbor there was a rich landlord and the rich landlord has many servants he was generous whenever his servants were in need of any help he used to generously lend them it so happened that he lent so much to one of his servants more than 10000 usd and the servant comes to the landlord and says master you have lent me so much you are kind to me you are generous to me when i was in need when i was in need of help when i am hungry when i am homeless when i am naked you are generous and compassionate and provided provision provided wages beyond wages you have helped me with so much of money you lend me i owe you so much you lend me more than 10000 usd but now i am not in a position to repay the amount that i owe you so 
I wish to become a servant to you forever. Me and my family will serve you all through our life. Then the master of the house, the landlord says, Because you do not have anything to repay the debt, and the debt is indeed immense. I forgive you of your debt. Go. You are no more my servant. You are free. You are relieved of the debt you owe me. What a grace. What a compassion. The preacher was so much blessed. The preacher was blessed with such kind employers all through his career. The preacher has not hoarded or accumulated any of the blessings that he received from God. Freely you received, freely you give, freely received from Jesus Christ and freely given to the needy. The preacher lands in Israel in the year 2010 with hardly few US dollars. To the surprise, as soon as he lands in the promised land Israel, his employer provides the check for 5,000 new Israeli shekels. Even though he was then out of station, he provides the check to the preacher through one of his employees. The preacher was surprised, marveled. This is only one example of divine provision. Do not hold up wealth for yourself. Depend on God. This hope in Christ will not put us to shame. The problem of this today's world is economic imbalances. Calamity is going to come. Crisis is going to come. Drought is going to come. Lack of resources is going to come, so I will accumulate. That will not work. That will be of no use. There are some people that have scattered what they possessed and become rich. There are some other people that have withheld and gave very little than they ought to give and still they remained in poverty. What you want to choose? You want to scatter all the wealth that you have and being blessed by God or you want to hoard wealth and still become poorer. We see good examples of being rich. Boaz, Boaz is a rich person. Yet he is so humble, yet he is so compassionate. What a wonderful person Boyaj is. Barnabas, the son of encouragement. In the times of New Testament, we see Barnabas. Barnabas is so rich. He has so much wealth. He has so much property. He has many lands. What does he choose? Really you receive. Really you give. Those times were indeed testing times for the church. The church was in its incipient stage, in the formation stage. Barnabas, the son of encouragement, true to his name, brings all the wealth, sells all the land, sells all the field and brings all the wealth and puts at the feet of the apostles. In those days the apostles were dedicatedly working, serving the Lord. We give ourselves for preaching and prayer. That is why the church flourished. Today it's very rare to find such apostles that have given themselves to prayer and preaching. Peter was receiving hospitality and accommodation. In Simon's house, Simon is a tanner by profession a maker of slippers of leather. 
being a observant Jew, what a great conversion in Peter. You are a tanner, 